Good morning, everyone. I'll call the Marion Township Board of Supervisors workshop meeting to order for Saturday, August 21st, 2021. The time is now 9.04 a.m. The first item on the agenda is to do the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, everyone, please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. For anyone who is interested, there are masks and hand sanitizer at the front of the room here. Um, anyone wishing to address the board can do so by coming to the front. There's a microphone there. Uh, if it is not on and does not have the numbers on it, uh, please just hit the power button on it as it probably went to sleep. Uh, when you do so, please clearly state your name and address for the record and then your public comment. Uh, at this time, we'll open up the floor to public comments for anybody who is uh, interested. Good morning, Kelly. Okay, I don't think we have any public comments unless Kelly has a public comment. Okay. Um, so we'll move into the first item for discussion, which is the zoning hearing board vacancy. Uh, we currently only have four members. It is a five member board. Attorney Keith Mooney recommended again, uh, appointing a fifth member to prevent any issues with tie votes. Uh, Anthony Martin, who is here, is uh, interested in the position. Thank you for coming out, Anthony. We just wanted to get a little bit of time to talk to you. We think just preliminarily you'll be a great fit for it, but we wanted to just kind of get a little background uh, on you. So uh, let me actually let me make sure that microphone's on. First of all, thank you for volunteering. There's not too much of that going on anymore. <laughs> well, I was asked, and so you know, when somebody asked, <laughs> it kind of initiates it. So, okay, you have questions? Um, or... uh, kind of softball ones. What's the kind of the general interest or background that you have with you know zoning related stuff? Well, I, I, my name is Anthony Martin. I reside at 455 Canal Road, and uh, I lived there most of my life. So I do have uh, a lot of background to the township. Um, as far as zoning, um, the only background I would have and, uh, you know, would be the last couple of zoning hearing meetings I have attended just, you know, out of curiosity of what, the, what's, what they look like. Um, just recently, I did get a zoning, the new zoning uh, book, and I did review that some and looked over that. Um, other than that, other than like personal projects with, that we did on our own, that would be my only other background to uh, any kind of thing. I think you've, you've certainly taken the initiative on, on that. You've done more than a lot of people in terms of getting the materials, reading the materials, trying to understand the, the process. Um, Tim, do you have any questions for me? No, I, I think it'll be a good fit. Yeah, I mean, the uh, only other thing is I do know all the members of the Zoning Hearing Board and, and uh, feel we can work well together. Good. As right. long as you keep an open mind, there's, you know, there's, people are asking for variances because they need a four or two or three or whatever. And as long as it isn't hurting the neighborhood. I was on a zoning hearing board, for, not here, but in my past life for about 10 years. And uh, it's an interesting position. It's fun. It can be fun. And it can also be a little testy at times, but you'll see that too, I'm sure. Okay, Irene, do you have any questions for Anthony? Thank you very much for volunteering to do this. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so I, I think Thursday night we have a, an action item for appointing Anthony then. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, you're welcome to stay. It, we got a couple more things on the meeting, but thank you for very, very much for coming out and letting us meet and talk to you face to face. Next item on the agenda is the Act 537. Uh, there's a, a number of things that are in motion on this. One of them is the income study, which is the next step for a couple of different aspects of this. Uh, firstly, being that we are kind of under, under a submitted and approved plan, there's certain things that we have to do, uh, but the income study will also arm us with feasibility related data if we have to do any sort of pushback against the DEP in terms of we can't afford this or we can't afford this. Um, we also have Alan Madera, who's our new SEO in the audience today. Thank you for coming out, Alan. Uh, he's working on the 
letters that are going to go out around the on lot maintenance program. And uh, Alan, do you have anything that you'd you'd like to add to the, the topic? Yes, I have two items I'd like to discuss with the board today. Do you mind playing? Just one. Yeah, right here. yeah absolutely. Yeah. Uh, grab a mic that way we can get you on the. Can everybody hear me? Yeah, as long as it's pointing more or less at you, yeah, okay, you're good. That's good. That's good. Okay, I'll try to be brief. The reason I asked to come to see you all today is I was asked previously to um, take a look at your letter that you had prepared and maybe make some comments or some suggestions on revising it. And I've narrowed it down to two main areas that I, I have to be sure that we're on the same page on so that we can proceed. Yep. I've set things in motion to get ready so we can launch the sewage management program in January. Um, the first issue is in the letter, um, you identify the, we call them districts, we call them, call them uh, areas, which is called area one, two, and three on the, on the map that was developed by McCarthy. Okay, and in the letter, um, it says that the first two sections would pump in 2021, which obviously we was have the eighth right month up. of 2021. Yeah. And then the next section would pump in 2022. Now you have a four year cycle. That would mean there'd be, everybody would pump in the first year or two and then nothing would happen for four years. So we do something a little differently. And I brought, I brought some examples to share with you. So you got, first of all, you got a four year cycle approved by DEP, which is unusual because the regulations specifically say three years. And in at least one case that I know of, Upper Burn, um, DEP did not approve anything other than three years. So three years, four years, it really makes no difference as long as we're doing something. Good. Yeah. So what we've done, and I prepared some handouts for you. This is all on my website. So you can, you can I encourage you to look at my website. Thank I'm you. gonna repeat Kumru Township over and over again because Kumru <laughs> Township has been a very successful program. And we developed Kumru's program based on what works in other townships across the state. A lot of research went into it, okay? So what we did in Kumru Township, we established three sewage areas mm -hmm. with a three-year cycle for each. And the people are simply asked to pump once in each three-year cycle, okay? Now, somebody who's really smart can figure out, well, if I pump at the beginning of this cycle and the end of the next cycle, I might be able to go more than three years, but that's only gonna happen once. That's only gonna work once, Yeah. okay? Some people pump more often, some people pump less often. And those are details that I'm not here to discuss today, but this is what I'd like to set up for Marion Township. <coughs> Excuse me. By so doing, we can then eliminate another paragraph here. Please note any person providing a receipt showing that their tank has been pumped within blah, 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 blah. Yeah. If we do it this way, if they pumped today, they would simply have to pump by the end of their next four-year cycle. Okay. So they're pumping within their four-year cycle. It makes administration that much simple, uh, simple manageable. Better. Yeah. It gives people and pumpers and us SEOs who have to run around and chase the pump trucks the time to do things. Okay. Okay. So um, just I wanted to make make that clear. Do you want an extra yeah. one of these for to show anybody or it's, it's oh, on my oh, website? Yeah, I was just, I'll get, yeah, I'll get my copy. I just want these as examples. Yeah. Copy everything is, but I'm gonna set up everything exactly like we do for for Kumru. So um, that being said, and if we're on the same page there, mm -hmm. I can make some recommendations. I like the idea of Marion Township sending out this notice. We will then send out our notices. It's part of our administration and we have to do that. And here is a sample of notice that we send out to Kumru Township residents. So this would be the initial notice that explains everything, tells them where to find information on the web, I know not everybody has access to the web. Um, we have a, a booklet that I created um, that is available on the web, but in the case of Kumru Township, I think we, we printed out something. Well, we had three meetings where we printed out um, about 80, because the maximum occupancy was 80. We printed out 80, so that'd be, that'd be 240 booklets that they took every single one. Okay, so that's something else that we can provide. We can provide that to you. You have them here at the township, and it gives answers to all the, you know, a lot of the questions. So all we have to do is, is read through the information. Education is prescribed as part of the sewage management program. It's part of what DEP wants us to do. Okay, so with that being said, um, that only leaves me with with so 
one last thing on the, on the letters. Mm. I'm assuming that if we get this worked out, you guys can send your letter, like, I don't know, September, October. Yeah. Let's get it out. Yeah. Okay. Because what I like to do is send our letters out between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Okay. To let them know that it's starting January 1st. Okay. So then if, if you guys do yours in September or October, the latest, and ours comes out between Thanksgiving and Christmas, that's really good timing to get, because one of the most common things I hear, I never got a notice. Yep. <laughs> you know how it is. Yep. Okay. All right. So that's enough about that. I'm glad that uh, you understand. Now we have the other issue of the fee. So you adopted a resolution that established a $100 fee mm. to be collected, invoiced and collected by the SEO. I'm not averse to doing that. However, I do believe that the fee is going to be too low to cover your expenses. And by asking us to invoice the people, keep track of who paid and who didn't pay and collect the fees, you're actually adding administrative duties. So it's getting more out of balance. Okay. Now, again, I'm not averse to doing this. What, it, what we found that works the best, what Humru does, what Spring is going to do if they ever <laughs> adopt theirs, okay, is they're going to put it on their tax bill. Okay. Um, what initially... Muhlenberg Township and Kumru Township did was they established a fee that's somewhere around $225 for each three-year cycle. They break that into thirds and that comes out to about $75 a year on the tax bill. Now what Kumru found is that was more than they needed. You want to have a surplus to cover enforcement costs and things like that. But Kumru found that $75 was too high and they actually lowered it to $65. Okay, now Kumru and Muhlenberg are more affluent townships. Spring Township initially started at $50 and they started really micro examining and they came down to a number that was kind of silly, like $42.50 or something like that. So they're somewhere in that range. Eventually what they decided in spring, again, a little more affluent township is let's just start the program and swallow the expenses. We can always do the fee later. So if you want to start the program under your current you know, fee schedule and have us collect checks, we can do that. But administration is going to cost some money and getting things started before we get, before we begin, we're already in the hole. Mm. Okay. So you want to have enough there to cover those costs, to cover administration of the program and to have a little bit of a surplus to cover any enforcement costs because enforcement is a part of the program. And that could include legal costs. Okay. If we have to get the solicitor involved for any reason, which we we'll try not to, but it's a reality. Okay. So my suggestion would be that you consider adjusting the fee to perhaps $45 a year for, to throw something out there, a number that seems to see, which seem to work. Okay. So over a four year cycle, um, you know, $45 a year. And that way you're not, it's automatic. You're not worrying about us collecting the fees. You're not paying us for the extra time mm. to do that service. Okay, and the invoicing and stuff. So really, those are the only two issues. And I don't need an answer on the fee issue today. I okay. just need to figure something out, how we're going to proceed by January. And um, I'll be happy to invoice the people and collect the fees until you're ready to make that change. Um, one issue that held up spring was the simple fact that Berks County changed their whole tax system. Yeah. Okay. And it became a little confusing for Kumru because even though they had it already set up, it appears on the bill as a sewer fee and people got confused. Well, I'm not on sewer, I have a septic system. Mm -hmm. Well, to the Berks County tax people, sewer is sewer. sewer. Yeah. So those are just bumps in the road. It's all worked out, mm -hmm. okay? That's all I have today. I just wanted to bring those things to your attention. If we're under, if we if we're, if we reached an understanding, I will proceed. Yeah, I, I think we're, we're driving the right direction with the letter. I appreciate the, uh, the suggestions. Simpler is better. So if there's things that you can do and suggest from an administrative standpoint that we're, we're not privy to, um, that <clears throat> thins the letter down, we can get that out pretty quickly. The only thing that we're going to want to do as a board is uh, tweak the Act 537 section a little bit because there have been some things that have been set in motion and things that have changed, that maybe changed the, the narrative a little bit about that communication. But the, uh, the zoning portion of the letter, the SEO portion of the letter, um, 
with Alan's tweaks, I think is ready I to go. I can definitely revise this now for you and send it over to, yeah. to Sue. Every time I went to do it, I started scratching my head going, oh, I'm going to handle it. I really need to talk to you guys so that we're on the same page. Yeah. You know, I have dealt with this with other boards. And in, in the case of, I don't want to beat up Robinson Township, but they stepped all over. We had a good program and they stepped all over it. And it's become increasingly ineffective because they, they, they micromanaged me. And I can do it for you. Yeah, so we we want simple, we want effective. So we're we're certainly and you don't want to go broke doing it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, so I th I think you're going to have the board's support on making that happen. Obviously, awesome. if there's some That's things that we sense. may disagree with at times, but we're we're after the same idea. Awesome. So um, I will get this all in motion, and you'll be hearing a lot from me. I'll be coordinating right. with you. Excellent. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank okay. you. I have one one other question with the uh, with the fees because we set the fee schedule. A while ago now, back when the other SEO was was in play, his fee schedule is a little lower. What kind of fee are we actually looking at? And I know it was on your schedule. I can't remember it off the top of my head well, for I'm, an actual I'm, inspection. I'm, I'm billing hourly. The SEO fee, now, right now my SEO fee is $65 an hour, and we only raise our fees. We kept them the same all through the recession. So from 2008 to like, I mean, it was a long time we kept mm -hmm. them the same. So $65 an hour is my SEO fee now. $55 an hour is our clerical fee. I do plan on raising those costs a little bit increase um, for 2022. We, we traditionally have raised our fees slightly every two years, okay? Um, I didn't actually sit down and figure out those numbers yet. Okay. But typically, we're talking about an hour to an hour and a half to do an inspection. It's great if we get a pumper who wants to schedule two or three at once. We can be more efficient that way. And then when we get back to the office and do the paperwork and the, and the clerical staff does, does their part, you know, you might be looking at... 150 to 200 dollars in effort to do the inspection and do the paperwork and stuff it all depends on what the circumstances are okay so if they're only paying 100 dollars once every four years you're gonna yeah you're gonna go down no, that's that's understandable we ran into a similar thing on some of the, the building related stuff that just the fee schedule kind of got outdated outmoded um some things obviously that goes quicker than others especially with coming into or and out of a recession but uh, if we have to revise it, we want to make sure that's the... And again, it, it, I can't stress enough, if we're actually doing the invoicing mm -hmm. and keeping track of that and then trying to enforce those who didn't pay and everything else, it just adds to the expense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I mean, I don't mind making money, but I, I, think, it's, I think there's better ways to do it. And it yeah. Putting it on the tax bill is the way that works. It, it's just the way that works. It's yeah, I think it's sensible. So we'll have to look at that. The only other concern, less pointed question for you, more of a pointed statement for Irene, is um, with us getting that in in advance, sometimes possibly three to four years worth of time, do we have to do anything special with the fact that that's a prepaid liability on the books? I mean, obviously, we'd set up a separate code of accounts for it, but I don't know if there's anything special that we have to do because it's, um, it's essentially like a prepaid service. If somebody moves, we would have to potentially cash them out for it or... Uh, um, transfer it to a new property owner for the, you know, for by address or there, there might be some, some moving pieces from a financial I point. I haven't run into that in any other municipality. Okay. Now, again, I'm only administering one township that's doing this now, but I've researched many. Okay. And we've got some other ones in the works. Obviously, if somebody moves, they're not going to pay, they're not going to continue to pay their annual fee. It'll just transfer to the next person. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I haven't run into it, but certainly maybe a question for your solicitor or whoever handles your group of your bookkeeping and your taxes. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I would think doing it by address is probably you the do best. Your due diligence. Yeah, so. yeah. And well, just like there are property ways. taxes, are, you know, just stay with the property. Yeah. yeah. So with this. Yeah, so yeah. we just we just have to make sure that we have that memoed right, I think, in yeah. QuickBooks. And then we just have to make sure that there's not, um, again, something weird about using money that's been prepaid for some, some, some other thing. Um, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Um, so, I mean, Al Alan's, Alan's been fantastic and he's been providing all the addresses for us. So it makes it easier, easy for me to track, um, anything. So as long, and he, his bills are fantastic. So I could always write in memo line what it's for. We can track everything by address. So if we have one of those oddball cases where someone moves and they've paid 
let's say like they sell the house, they move, but their check didn't clear till whenever. I mean, that we're able to track the data now a lot better than what we were before. So, and I think maybe what I'll do when things settle down for me, I could always give Coomer a call and, and talk to their treasurer and see how they're tracking it in their system and make sure we're, we're doing it most efficiently. So I, I really don't see a problem with that because Alan's billing is just fantastic. Thank you for that. Gene Johnson from Coomer Township has volunteered numerous times Anybody who has any questions at all to contact her, she would even offer to be willing to come and speak. I mean, she's that supportive of what we're doing. Good, very good. So well, we appreciate it. And just to echo Irene's thing, your, your paperwork, your billing is a breath of fresh air compared to what we used to have yeah. to deal with. Thank you. Um, it's like a 250% improvement. Oh, yes. Right? Yeah. Thank you so much. I'll pass that along to Jane and Karen because they are really the ones that are that, that do it all. So Yeah, it really does make like, Irene and Dan's and my life when I was working on that so much, so much simpler because you don't have to try and hunt things down and cross reference and figure things out. It's just, it's, it's there black and white staring in the we face. Need, we need to do that. We're administering numerous townships. We have to keep ourselves organized or, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or else. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. so in our township, everybody is on a on on, lot except for Stonecroft. Stonecroft and uh, Dutch yeah, Valley Dutch Foods. Valley, That's yeah. it. That's it. No, that makes it easy too. Yeah, it's we were talking about this a little bit before the meeting that uh, the, the list of uh, exclusions for people that are going to be part of this program is very short. So as long as we have an up-to-date tax list that he can connect to McCarthy Engineering's map of kind of the districts, um, it should be pretty easy mm -hmm. annually to just go, okay, we're going to take the list of properties, the property owners, and if they're part of Stonecroft or Dutch Valley Foods, yes or no, and then boom, there's your mailing list. So it's just going to create additional problems though for the tax collector. Shouldn't. Now, the only thing that would be different would be if we got it added to the tax bill and it would just be bottom line would be higher. And uh, I and lean that, or. I mean, the county, I forget county what county. time of the year they request. I have to fill out a form that we put street lights on for town. Um, and then the sitting dates. And then, well, she provides the same. Well, but I mean, it's the same, it's the same time frame, but, though, isn't but it? I have to provide like what we tax people. The streetlights being one of them. So then, if you want to add this to the tax bill, that's just something you know. After you do the ordinance resolution, mm -hmm. whatever you have to do, then okay. I just tell the county. They send me a, a, it's a another form line yeah. once a year that I have to fill out. And Some people have trash service. Yeah, that, you know, yeah. Trash so service. it's pretty yeah. relatively yeah. easy. That's good. Yeah. That makes more sense. So too. all I do is fill out the form and the county does all the other stuff. <laughs> like, but if they pay taxes, see, we, one of the things that we run into is border properties, boundary properties, properties that cross the township mm -hmm. line, okay? Mm -hmm. And a lot of SEOs, and I didn't recently had Tim Wagner from DEP make the wrong call. Well, it's where it's physically located. No, it is not. If they pay taxes to Marion Township, they're in. If they pay taxes to Tolpehawk and they're out. Mm -hmm. They're not part of the program. Right. It's where they pay their taxes. Mm -hmm. okay. Makes sense. Okay, well, fantastic. We all look forward Thank to working you. very closely with all you right. on Thank getting you very this much. Run. Have a nice day. Thank you, you too. We'll just see that you get that. The list. The list. Yeah. That we'll be in touch. Okay. Yeah. We'll yeah. be in touch. Just call me. I'll, I'll, I'll start sense. doing some stuff. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Alan. You made it easy. Yeah. Uh, easy is good. I like easy. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the stone crop infill. Take care, Alan. Uh, the basin was made deeper, but it is not draining. Um, I've not been over there over the past couple of days. And I know we had some heavy rain. Is it once again a lake? It's a lake. Yeah. Okay. If you want some lakefront property, you can get it over there. <laughs> uh, okay, just as a kind of side note, our engineer did not approve the plan that resulted in these changes. However, BCCD did. The Stone Group, the developer, needs to resolve this issue prior to closing out any of the open projects that they have and finishing the development. Uh, not really any new developments or updates therein. This is something that uh, they're aware of, we're aware of, and we're watching closely as they, they try to finish out the remaining spec houses because uh, they would have to fix the infield basin and any of the, the, the road paving concerns before they close out their final bonds. It's a shame that this was done because this was not broken. I want to get rid of that. Everything was working fine. Just, uh, just look at some of it. I did. Didn't I? I mean, it's still running, but... Well, it's okay.
There one. Just wanted you to touch it. I just I push off. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that technical. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. Mr. Technical, yeah. Mr. Road Crew. We got yeah. We've got we've got a lot of people wearing a lot of a lot of fun hats. Um, okay, next item is the low okay. volume road projects. Oh, actually, Peter, uh, yes. Uh, HOA is looking for a response from McCarthy Engineering regarding the curb repair work that's being done in here. We have not heard back from anyone. I saw I saw an email at one point that uh, the curb repairs that were done that you 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 and the HOA had pointed out uh, wildly unsatisfactory. So they're they're going to have to fix those because that's not even remotely close to what it should be. Um, beyond that, I think it's the it's the standard when they go through to do the road inspection, they're going to go through and mark any of the curbs that are unsatisfactory or damaged or are in need of repair. And then there's a very prescribed process that they have to go through. They can do a surface patch if it meets a certain criteria. Otherwise, they have to do a cutout uh, of a certain length on either side between seams. Um, we'll reach out and see if we can get, because I think we have something. It may not be 100% like formal because it was a draft email, but Dan, I thought that uh, this was decided that they would fix everything at the same time whenever Stone Group is complete over there. Well, that's not true, Jim, because they're going through and re-repairing the curbing that they botched up the first time, and now they're doing some concrete patching work in the curbing as well. And we haven't heard anything from McCarthy Engineering as to what the standard should be. We can get that. We can get that pretty easily. Yeah. What the the standard is the the agreement. You're you're right, Jim. Is that they're gonna they're supposed to do that all at the same time. With that said, though, there's nothing stopping them from doing it ahead of that if they really want to. But uh, we can certainly get a breakdown of what the proper repair actually is, what that consists of, what it's supposed to look like, how it's supposed to be done. That's an easy enough ask for us to get from McCarthy Engineering. I think there may have just been a little miscommunication on who was waiting for what, but that's something we can certainly oblige. It is obvious, though, Dan, that what they've done so far is very inadequate. Yeah, a couple of the pictures that we were shown, it's hilariously inadequate. Yeah, it looks like they just <laughs> yeah, took it, crap. I mean, the they just keep going around here and doing what I call patchwork, doing something here, doing something there. And Nobody knows if the standard, the way they're doing it is correct, and we're going to be f have to force them to keep redoing everything. We'd like it done once and done right. Understood. Understood. But kind of the safety net on that is even if they do it now, if it's not right, they're going to have to fix it before they close out. Like, it's, it's not going to get closed unless it's right. We sure hope so, Peter. Yeah, well, I mean... I can speak for myself, and I'm pretty sure Jim's of the same mind, and Irene's of the same mind. Is we're not we're not going to let them get away with something that we we wouldn't we wouldn't pass if it was a regular municipal road. If we hired somebody to go out and pave or go out and put a curb in, if it's substandard, we're not we're not going to okay it. We're going to send it back and say do it right. Okay. Okay. Uh, real quick, the low volume project of the year. Uh, we were selected for the school in Wintersville Roads uh, for the dirt, gravel, and low volume road grants. The BCC, uh, Berks County Conservation District Board of Directors, had approved this project as one of their uh, projects and selected it for the project of the year. Um, unfortunately, I think the meeting that they had, kind of the, the awards ceremony was when I was out of town. I was not able to make it, and I think everybody else kind of had scheduling conflicts as well. Uh, but I think we should send uh, BC, excuse me, uh, BCCD and uh, Dean a, a very nice thank you letter or thank you card because they have been extremely generous over the years and a lot of the projects that they've funded for us. Next up, also related to roads, is the culvert at Marion Drive by Jacob Weiss. Uh, McCarthy Engineering have provided a cost estimate of $91,539.37 to replace this culvert uh, using our road crew to do the majority of the work. At last month's Board of Supervisors meeting, we authorized McCarthy Engineering to pursue the permits for this project. Uh, the goal is to have an update on that for Thursday night, as Jim McCarthy will be present. Um, 
also related to culverts, the culvert at Marion Drive north of School Road by Oscar Mandek. Uh, a cost estimate was provided of $59,423.79 to replace this culvert, again, utilizing our road crew doing most of the work. Last month's Board of Supervisors meeting, we authorized McCarthy Engineering to pursue the permits for this project as well. Again, hopefully we'll have an update for Thursday night. The intent being to try to do the three culverts that we have in the township that are of most dire need, kind of back to back to back using our, our road crew for as much labor as possible. Uh, the final culvert is the one on Sheridan Road by Gerald Hoover's farm. Uh, at this point, we're just waiting for the chapter 105 permit and then we can get started with uh, ordering any of the, uh, the items like the, uh, the box culvert, uh, the head walls and things like that. And then we can turn the road crew loose on, on starting to work on that. The Spur Road and School Road intersections. Uh, at last month's meeting, we authorized the cost of $1,000 for Topahawken Township to lay five feet of macadam at the intersection of Spur Road to cut down on wear on that road as you enter and exit it. Uh, Topahawken's roadmaster was notified and uh, it has not been laid yet, but the estimated time is sometime between September 1st and the 30th, depending on their scheduling and availability. So we'll keep a close eye on that, but I know Sue has reached out and Butch from our road crew has reached out and uh, it's basically just been, okay, we'll get to it when we, as soon as we can. So that's well on, on its way. Uh, next is the Cold Summit Farmers. Me, yes, do, yes. Do you want to now touch on the flooding issue? At I was going to do that at the end, but okay, I can do it now. It's, either way is fine. Um, so I've not driven by. Jim, have you driven? Did you drive in? Conrad Weiser for that, that 979 or whatever it was that the had been, the flooding issue. Okay. I'll have to drive over and see if there's any signs because we had heavy rainfall last week, if, if I'm not mistaken. Um, that's uh, basically one third to two thirds, depending on if the, the property owner impacted has done any digging yet. Um, we're working on getting written permission from the property owner to be able to come out of that, that right of way, which is only one foot past where the, the pipe exits. Uh, so that we can turn Butch and Kevin and anybody else on the road crew loose on trying to straighten that end wall and uh, dig in that kind of catch basin to slow water volume down. Um, yes? I'm, uh, it would be better to get you on the mic. Yeah, just it's easier for the people uh, watching on YouTube to understand. You're, you're talking about your work, work crew. Yes. Oh, I'm basically <laughs> the only one during the week. Uh, uh, Kevin can help me Saturdays. Saturdays uh, I mean, uh, Leon, Leon can help me anytime if he wants to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, wouldn't it be better for us to hire like Brian Algar? See, uh, he he uh, he know how to do everything, and he he could he could do it in maybe a quarter of the time it would take the work to do it. What I'd like to do is I'd like to send you or you and Kevin or any combination therein of you and the road crew out to do a little bit of, I'll call exploratory surgery on it. Um, dig around the head wall because the way that pipe has been put together, explained to me by, by McCarthy Engineering, is it's actually two separate pieces. You have the cement yeah. bit for the pipe, you have the cement bit for the head wall. Um, as long as we don't have structural damage to the pipe, we should be able to essentially remove the head wall, straighten it and put it back on before we get like Ryan out there, because then that's obviously gonna change like him being there, him having to come back, if we have to order another piece of precast, um, getting a look at it, digging around the top, just hand digging it with a shovel, cause that's not the deep part. But I'm personally not opposed to contracting the heavier bit out to Ryan, cause he has a, he has a, he has a backhoe that he can use that for, rather than trying to have you guys dig the large pit on the other side of the pipe that's gonna be filled with like riprap. So, the initial, once we have the permission to actually go onto the property, because like even you standing around with shovels, chances are you're probably going to come in and out of the right of way. Um, kind of getting a feel for how bad the situation is right at the end there. If you open that up at the top there and you say like, wow, this pipe is seriously cracked, then we obviously have to re rethink this and say, okay, are we going to replace the pipe? There's permitting and things that we have to go along with that, but the big thing is let's get a look at it. And if it's okay, if it's just a situation where it's become disconnected, that's easy. We got, to your point, we get Ryan out there. He's there for an afternoon with, with his equipment and yeah, you're and in and out and it's done. He, he, know, he knows how to put uh, the, a basin, mm -hmm. uh, uh, 
the the whole the wall. Yeah. Uh, so it doesn't heave again. Yeah. Yeah. Now I, I wanna uh, I wanna get you know, a. I, I, I'm I'm not experienced. No, no, that's that's fine. I'm I'm all for getting the right people on the on the right job. But I think just opening it up a little bit and seeing what we've got before we start getting people out there is probably the best bet. And once we have the permission from the property owner to be able to come and go a little bit, that's uh, that's where we're going to be. And whether it's Ryan or anybody else, I'm again, I'm not yeah, opposed I, to I, hiring I'm somebody not, with a backhoe. I'm not saying we have to get Ryan. Yeah. If, if you mm -hmm. have somebody else in mind. No. We, we all have that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. And the, the, I think one of the biggest dysfunctions we have is we don't have a backhoe. If we had a backhoe, we could just send you guys out and do it. I mean, we could rent one from Wico, but at the end of the day, between paying like hourly wages for you guys, paying you like close to $1,000 to rent the, the backhoe, uh, all told, would it be better to just say, okay, Ryan or somebody else come out, here's where you got to dig. It has to be this deep, set the, set the wall, fill back fill it with the stone, we'll have the stone might be a lot faster. You might be looking at two or three hours with you guys and maybe one hour with somebody else who does this all day, every day. So that's where, that's ultimately where we're going. But again, I want to know what's there underground. And that just is going to be like an hour or two with a shovel to see like what's, what's actually down there. Um, because if we open it up and we find that the pipe is just absolutely wrecked, there's not really going to be much of a point of resetting the head wall. We have to talk about replacing the pipe then. So uh, hopefully we'll have some some news. I'll, I'll call Andy again, um, talk to him about what we need to do. The last time we had one of these, it was it was not terribly involved. It was a, a short, I think like two page long thing about like right away. And I just I took it to, to Hassler's and got it notarized. So it, it, it would be an easement. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a temporary easement. Mm -hmm. So really not terribly complicated. It's just getting getting the paperwork from the solicitor, getting time yeah. with the property owner. They they. They seem interested in this, and we've yeah. had some good conversations. Like mm -hmm. I said, me and Jim McCarthy stopped by and talked to them, and really kind of went through things and explained like this: this is going to make a huge difference on the opposite side of the road for these reasons. These are the things that you want to do on your side, and obviously not like a, a full engineer's commentary, but like you can stand there and you can watch the contour of the ground is valid, and then suddenly isn't, and then suddenly is again. Where the, I don't think it was them, but somebody at some point essentially created a dam in their front yard. Mm -hmm. So when water, any water, whether it's from the pipe or just general rainfall, it collects there. And when it overflows, it only has one place to go, which is basically straight, straight in their front door. So. You, uh, you said uh, we, we have to see that the pipe is cracked or broken or whatever. Yeah. Well, first of all, you, 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 have, you have to get the pipe cleaned up. Well, yeah. You see that. Well, no, I'm talking from the top. Like, if you excavate from the top and you notice that it's got huge cracks or, like, it's just well, horribly I, degraded. I, I don't think... I was down there several times already, and I don't think the road is cracked. Well, I, I don't either, but before we go and hire somebody, I don't want to get somebody out there to start really doing this and then to go, oh, crap, we got to, like, basically have to cut the road open and replace the pipe before we can go further. Um, it's a, it's going to be a pretty simple process. We just get, like fire department or somebody with a pressurized hose to just blow water out of it. Um, but I don't want to do that and, and introduce a huge volume of water until we have the other end of it sorted out. Yeah. So, so I'll, I'll be in touch with you on that, but I, I want to do a, a little bit of research. I'll call it on that before we actually go and, and get somebody out there with a backhoe. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, Jim or Irene, any questions around that? Um, no, just from a housekeeping perspective, um, I guess I'll just work with Sue. I'll keep separate folders for all these uh, projects. And uh, um, so far, we're on target uh, financially with what funds we have in the accounts to get all these scheduled projects done. So I'm pleased with that. Good. I think just as memory serves me as a rough estimate, we're actually with the culverts, even mm -hmm. as is, we're going to be slightly under budget. Which is good. I'd much rather come in under than than close or over. Yeah, we, we just got a liquid fuels deposit also, so um, yeah, yeah. So 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 we're okay. I mean, so far, um, the only funds that have been used is everything that's in the checking account. We I, we haven't had to um, put funds from the money market into the checking to pay for anything. So I just want to um, create folders this way. I know which project is what, and and each funds are separate because. We have more forms to fill out online as Sue and I discovered the other day. Yeah. So 
I see Sue grinning there. Yeah. The FHWA form. Uh, yeah, that was, um, that's not going to be fun. Boy, Dan, there's a lot more housekeeping I need you to help me with. So uh, I wish I could catch a break. It's okay. It's okay. Back there. Yeah, I'm going to be a little bit behind myself. I, I should, I'm just looking at the calendar. I should be able to get down to the office uh, one evening this week um, and to get the financials over. So. Okay, good, 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 good. Yeah. And as always, when you run the reports out, send them my way. I'll. Yeah, yeah. It's it's just it's just a matter of of uh, keeping good records with everything, and and so it's it's clear for me, but it's also clear for the auditor and clear for any reports we have to do, and a clear record going into the future, so things aren't muddled and shoved together. So I just want to make it as easy as possible for anyone to look any of this information up down the road. Okay, very good. Okay, next item on the agenda is the Cold Summit Farmers Preserve Industrial Park Traffic Planning and Design. The project is predominantly located in Mill Creek Township, Lebanon County. Uh, Wommelsdorf Borough is willing to share the costs of the traffic study with us. Uh, they have appointed TPD to do the traffic impact study. Uh, Jim Brooks has kindly volunteered to be the point person. This project has approximately 1.4 acres in Marion Township, but the concern largely is the, the scope of the project that it exists in Mill Creek. And uh, really it's close proximity to us. Specifically, it's basically right behind Stonecroft. Uh, concern being that uh, something of this size is going to generate a lot of traffic, not only tractor trailers, but also uh, just general commuter traffic for the number of jobs uh, that will be in that location. Um, I haven't seen any major updates on that. I'd imagine we're just kind of in a, a holding pattern until they go to do said traffic study. There'll be I'm sure a slew of meetings around this as that starts to unfold. Very similar to what we had with the open space uh, where they'd have regular meetings uh, and then more meetings beyond that even as things kind of get into full swing with it so we everybody figures out that this is a shortcut to go through here yeah and yeah, that's yeah. that's the purpose of the traffic study because then <clears> they can say like yeah this is the kind of volume you're going to look at because of this then that's where a lot any of the objections that are lodged are going to start to find traction so Next up, building maintenance. Uh, Irene has contacted <laughs> numerous contractors about meeting room renovations and building property maintenance. Uh, last we had left off, we're putting this on a, a slight bit of a hiatus as we're assessing total project costs over the next five to 10 years versus potentially uh, going with like a new building. Um, so we need to, to weigh kind of dollars and cents against dollars and cents on, okay, this is how much it's gonna cost to rehab the current space versus getting land somewhere else within the township and, and putting a new building there. Um, Irene, do you have any other updates or things you want to add to that? Um, no, we're just, I'm honestly, um, I'm just waiting to get an estimate about the brick repointing. Um, the other day, just looking at, forgive me, I don't know, north, south, south, east, west. When you pull into the lot, that wall that's facing the parking lot, just looking around the windows, you could see just there's so much going on with the brickwork. So, um, again, contractors aren't calling me back. So once again, I'm, when I'm down in the office, I will be reaching out to a number of people to see if we can get more estimates. So, uh, you know, I want everyone in the public to understand this isn't about making the building beautiful. This is about getting the building safe. Um, we're not even thinking about cosmetic things like in the hallway with the plaster falling down, etc. We just, it's just general building maintenance that's been neglected and seeing what we need to do. And just like you said, dollars and cents seeing what we would need to invest in the building to keep it safe. Um, and just keep in mind for, for those of you that uh, um, aren't familiar with the building layout, we really only use three rooms in this two-story building. The, the room that's upstairs is just used for storage and, and we haven't maintained that all that well. Um, and we use the office, the file room and the meeting room. And, and to me, it's such a pity because you know, there's so much more potential in that building, but at the same time, we have to be cognizant of the cost of repairing. And so we're going to get everything estimated, and then we're going to have a long conversation over what the, the next step should be. So. Okay, very good. Thank you. Kind of as a segue to that, the American Rescue Plan Act, uh, the ARPA money was transferred into our interest-bearing account. Uh, PSATS expects the U.S. Treasury Department to issue final rules during the fall of 2021, so we should know in the next couple of months. Um, we will want to have a resolution to amend the budget 
to include that money. And then when we go to do the budget for next year to forecast that in as well. Um, don't have to do anything with that today, but so uh, we're probably going to want to do that either at Thursday's meeting or at next month's Board of Supervisor meeting to make that motion to amend the 2021 budget. Um, may I make a comment here as well? Mm -hmm. um, Peter, do you prefer to leave the motions to um, the Thursday meeting? Uh, because the funds are currently sitting in our checking account. I did check with our accountant. Um, we have no issues with moving it over into the savings account. The question that we had during last, I think it was workshop meeting is whether or not any interest gains on that funds would have to be calculated out separately. And her uh, feeling was that that wouldn't. So any funds, any interest that we gain on that uh, would just be in our pockets. Okay. And since there's no pressing issues uh, right now that we need to address with respect to the ARP funds, I'd rather just have them sit in the, in the savings account, let them gain a little bit of interest and uh, until we get those final rules and we could honestly see what some of the other townships are doing. Again, going back to just the prior uh, comments, um, we may be able to use a portion of those funds with respect to a new building as to address anything um, related to COVID. So, of course, um, safety would be one of the biggest things, uh, entry points into the building, um, having the office positions where we could still have the public enter the building and um, keep ourselves separate so that if there were another uh, quarantine situation, um, we would still be able to essentially stay open to the building, uh, stay open to the public. In addition, any um, audiovisual needs, which we um, were thinking about implementing here, as, as everyone can see with the microphones, et cetera, um, certainly we need to upgrade in our system. And again, uh, the pandemic really showed how, I don't want to say unprepared, but how we kind of scrambled and did the best that we could with what equipment we had. Um, you know, it showed us what, what we're lacking with respect to computers, etc. So some of those funds can be used towards a new build as well, as long as we word that portion carefully. Um, so um, do you, did you want me to wait till Thursday's meeting to uh, make a motion to move those funds over? Or do you want, can we do that today? We can do that today. So my, my kind of general rule of thumb that I've gone into yep. this with is if it's anything that's really a big discussion point or anything like that, let's save it for Thursday night. But simple housekeeping stuff, whether it's in the checking or in the savings, it's kind of an immaterial point. But the money is sitting there. It just makes more sense to be sitting in the one yep. that gives us the most utility for it. So yeah, if you want to go ahead and make a motion to move that, that's fine. Sure. I would like to make a motion to move the currently received American Rescue Plan Act funds in the sum of $100,848.79 from our general fund into our general fund money market account. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, very good. Okay, next item on the agenda, unless we have anything further with the American Rescue Plan Act, is the Tulpahawken Police Service Rates. Uh, we have received a letter indicating a 4% increase for 2022. Uh, the math on the letter, however, was incorrect. Um, their secretary sent us a corrected letter. Effective January 1st, 2022, the rate will be $54,246.96 or $4,520.58 monthly. The rate for 2021 is $52,160.52 or $4,346.71 monthly. It's uh, an increase of roughly about uh, $2,100 over the course of uh, 2022. I see math. Uh, Jim's doing the math. Great. It was good. Yeah. Um, so really <clears throat> not much there. They're contractually allowed a certain percentage increase annually. Um, and this is right in line with what that is. So really, uh, the only thing we have to do is when we go to do budget, which is going to be in the next couple of months, is to make sure that we use the, the updated rate for 2022. Next item on the agenda is the semi quincentennial for the Commonwealth of PA and the USA. Uh, that's July 4th, 2026. Uh, that we just received an email from Paul Jansen at the CELG. 
They would like all municipalities in Berks County to pass a resolution supporting the PA Commission for the USA Semi-Quincentennial. According to Paul's second email, we may or may not decide to directly participate uh, as we're not inherently required to. So basically, we didn't get a whole lot of detail, but they're, they're looking for everybody to kind of opt into it with that resolution. And then if we choose to do things like walking tours or anything else, that's really going to be at, at our discretion from the sounds of it. Um, again, we can have further discussion, maybe make a motion Thursday night. I'm not opposed to it, especially if there's not any hard requirement that we're, we're signing up for on you're going to do the following things. So Next is the property maintenance issues. Uh, we had talked at last month's meeting about having a rental inspection ordinance that would allow us to inspect rental properties every other year. Uh, there's a copy of Richland Borough's ordinance in the packet. Um, I think we need to, to look over that further. There's, I'm sure we're going to be some things that we're going to want to tweak and tune to Marion Township specifically. Uh, so if you have an opportunity between now and Thursday night, I'm still playing catch up. I haven't read through the, the Richland Borough Ordinance sample yet, but uh, read that over. That way we can have some additional discussion on Thursday's uh, meeting. It's a good ordinance. I've read it. Good. <clears throat> I'd also like to, uh, as I mentioned before, strengthen our existing ordinance in terms of unsightly properties. Okay. Um, so can you add that to the agenda? We'll put that on as an item that we can talk to, to Andy about with the uh, the IPMC. Well, you, you can discuss it under property maintenance. Okay. I mean, I can put. Oh, it I, mean, I mean, just like put a note in under. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, just yeah. just add it in there. That way, like we don't forget about it. But yep. um, not that I'm sure Jim won't forget about it. But yep. uh, we can add that in there. That way, we can ask if there are because I'm sure there's certain things that can be made a little little harder. But I hope so. <laughs> well, because we I, have I, we have a couple properties that are completely out of control. I think too. You can instruct craft to be to patrol more. To um, yeah, we can. Harder. They can. They can certainly enforce a little harder. But I think one of the things that's frustrating for Jim is one of the aspects of the process is going through that that magisterial court portion, and that takes that takes a lot of time. There's a, a, a lot of I don't want to say delay or, or inaction, but there's a, a long period between. Okay, we've given you a letter, you've ignored it, you've done X, Y, and Z, and nothing's happened. Now we're taking it to court, and then it sits for months. Well, we um, take you to court, and they pay a hundred dollar fine. Once a year? Well, I think it's... Well, no, what, no, what, no, what no, Jeff no. Fiant said at that meeting when, I believe when Glenn and Glenn Craft and Jeff were here, um, like once they know that the fee fine was paid, they can reissue a notice of violation again. Mm -hmm. And then if they pay the fee again, reissue it again. I mean, I don't know how many times, you'd have to talk to them and see how many times they can do that. Well, they can, they can do that into perpetuity they until at some it point. Forever, but, but it takes so long for this process that well, that's, if we were well, lucky, the IPMC, we were lucky it might get done twice a year. I mean, yes, but the, the, big, the big limiting factor here is the magisterial court. Right, so right. when it goes to court the first time, as Jeff indicated, chances are you're going to get a slap on the wrist, which right. is fine. First time, whatever. When you come back in front of that district justice again for a second time for the exact same thing, third time, possibly a fourth time, they're going to be increasingly less lenient. And at some point, they're going to invoke that section in the IPMC that empowers the municipality to just go out and fix it and build the property owner. Right. That's obviously the absolute last resort. And I'm, I'm personally in favor of us not being the deciding factor on that for uh, just a, a huge number of reasons. But uh, there are things in... In the plan that go through that that process, um, it's just not maybe as expedient as Jim might might like. So we'll have to talk to Andy and see if there are areas that we can strengthen that, or if it's a situation because like the the way the wording is, it's it's kind of a Pandora's box when you set like the fine limits where it's not to exceed a certain amount. So if you set that way high, you could have a situation where somebody gets waxed for something really kind of innocuous for like, if you set it to $3,000 or something high like that, they get a $3,000 fine for not mowing their lawn. Seems a little excessive, but we just have to make I'm sure that we have the balance. To that, that expedite. It, it starts out 
you get a warning and it escalates. Yeah. Because we've been ignored. I'm told on this property for what, 30 years? Well, we've had the well, IPMC we for about IPMC for four. Years. Yeah. We have that. That was adopted since I'm here. I'm here there, for four and a half years. In, in fairness, there was the, um, the, the ordinance about rubbish. We had a junk ordinance. Yeah, thank believe, you. Which um, wasn't really. They didn't good. really enforce it. Yeah, it wasn't enforced. Well, it's obvious it hasn't been enforced. No. There's stuff, well, on, there's well, stuff on the property, the property I'm talking about that's actually rusted away. The property that's how long it's you're talking there. about also has gotten letters from the township in the last 30 years saying, clean up your property. Well, yeah, and he, he does, told, and he and told then Andy then at the last away. meeting, after the last meeting, he told Andy, oh, I'm working on it. Well, I drive by it at least once a day, yeah. and he yeah. is he's working on adding more. He's not working on cleaning it up. I know, I know. I'm not arguing with you. Yeah, I mean, I'm, you. I'm just yeah. tired of being ignored. Right. Now, no. keep in mind, there's got to be a way to escalate that fine so that it gets his attention. $100 is to get his attention. Heidelberg Township, too. There was a home in Heidelberg Township, not too far away from where I live, um, that was abandoned. And they ended up, after about a year and a half or two years, the, the township actually you know, went through the process mm -hmm. and then hired somebody to come in, bulldoze the thing over. Uh, but you had, they had to yeah. go through the Yeah, there's, there's a very prescribed but, process for um, this. So I think what we want to talk to Andy about is how do we maybe, because it's already like, it's outlined in the IPMC, it's pretty prescriptive. How do we go about giving us and Kraft uh, additional ability to enforce that maybe at a, a faster rate of speed or something along those lines? Or... Um, changing maximum fine amounts or putting something in there about, you know, the first, the first one is only this amount and then the subsequent ones are higher amounts, a, a higher maximum amount. There, there's a number of things that I can just immediately think of, but we really need the, the attorney input on what's mm -hmm. actually going to be legally acceptable and, and prudent on that. Well, plus you, you told Kraft be a little lenient, so yeah. maybe you just need to tell well, Kraft to not be lenient. Well, spe know? specifically, maybe, because I still want them, for, just for the record, I still want them to be lenient for most people, because we've actually had a very good response. We've had, oh, we've sent out, I think, maybe a total of like 11 or 12 letters. They sent out. quite a few letters and out, most and of them with the exception of out. one, maybe two, I know the second property, they are actively making efforts. It's still still cluttered, but mm -hmm. they're, they're making an effort. Mm -hmm. They're making a good college try. Mm -hmm. I, I'm i of the opinion that we shouldn't necessarily go after people like that. If you send them a letter and they're making an honest attempt, they're making progress, they're making a difference, let them go. Check in on them, make sure they don't backslide or stall or anything like that. But if you have a property like the one that Jim is referencing, mm -hmm. where we sent them a letter mm -hmm. and it's very obvious that they've just crumpled it up and threw it away. We sent them another letter, they crumpled it up, threw it away. Mm -hmm. um, and we've got, actually gotten to the point of having a fine levied against the property and then, then paying it, uh, that uh, we should go through, I think, a different channel for that sort of thing. Not just for that one property owner, but that specific thing. If you have somebody who is routinely and habitually ignoring, then there should be a, a mechanism, some other avenue of like, okay, this is for when people are being nice and, you know, cooperating. And then you have the one for when people are not. But have you voiced this concern to crack? Is, I guess my point. Uh, there, we've we've had conversations. I haven't gone down the avenue of like specifically outlining something like in the IPMC for like when you hit this sort of scenario. Okay, but well, we've we've that. yeah, yeah, that's that's conversation with Andy yeah. again. But um, Crafts is very much aware of. I'll say the annoyance. Oh, uh, I, I from, know. <laughs> I mean, I'm not arguing. Yeah, I'm not arguing with yeah. You. It's just I'm you know yeah. just saying you, you you've in the past said oh let's be lenient yeah. and. You so they pick and choose no, 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 either. no, and it's it's so, it's not about singling anybody out, yeah. but I it's uh, there. Yeah, what you're talking about. I'm not yeah. arguing. Yeah, no, 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 that. no, no. I, 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 for what it's worth, I think we're we're saying the same things. But Kraft is aware that they need to they need to escalate a little bit with this one particular property because of the the circumstance that that exists here. Um, changing the IPMC to maybe outline that might be the next the next logical step to say like when like leniency like you don't want to just flat out say like leniency is the expectation well, but I, that could be in what we passed i, I have it, you looked over what we passed it, it doesn't specifically like say be more lenient that was the instruction from like me and peter wallace and franklin but um the the process in there is again pretty prescriptive so 
we could harden that. We have the, the standing director from the board for like generally be lenient, but then build in that, you know, when you do this at later times, second infraction, third infraction, fourth infraction becomes progressively stepped in terms of what. And I think that's what's missing. Yeah. The ordinance itself is a, is a pretty good ordinance. And most people, when they're notified, take it seriously and they start to clean up. Some take longer than others mm -hmm. because maybe of age but, or, but also or what, inability. But, but we have a couple particular situations where you're right. They mm -hmm. take the letter and they go, <laughs> like, I'm going to do that. And they throw it in the damn wastebasket. Mm -hmm. And we have to stop it. Again, if I lived next to that, this particular property, I would... I would be, I'd be furious. And I drive by it and I'm furious every time I drive by it. I think the next Because we're just furious. being ignored. Mm -hmm. And it's time to stop being ignored. We have to find a way to escalate that, mm -hmm. get his attention so that he starts to, to take us a little bit more seriously. Because I, at this point, he just laughs at us. I agree with you. And it's unfortunate that we have one scenario like that because unfortunately the, the, the other way that we've been handling this has worked for better than 90 percent of the people that letters That's have right. gone to but really to to steal that old idiom it takes one bad apple to spoil the bunch well, so where i come from they just call that a jackass <laughs> uh, may i offer some comment yes okay i guess i agree with sue's position we have to treat everyone equally across the board oh no so, i so I don't know whether or not we have to um, accept this as a policy or, or just kind of restate things. So I, I think in a nutshell, I think, Peter, what you're trying to say is if, we're, if a, um, a property has been given a notice, if we see compliance, um, then we could come back and review it again and again if we see progress. But if we're not seeing progress, then we definitely need an escalation clause. And unfortunately, when it comes to things, it, it's, it's doing this, I don't want to say without heart, but from an administrative perspective, we have to treat everyone the same across the board, whether or not um, whether or not we like it. And, and we want to be kind, but at the same time, we also have to be fair to everyone. So I, you know, we all know this one property, and, and there hasn't been compliance. I agree, there needs to be an escalation, but we also have to treat all other properties the same if that's the case. So um, I guess the policy, I think everyone's trying to say, if, if we're seeing compliance we're going to give you a longer period of time, but if we see non-compliance, it's gonna fall into that escalation uh, clause. And so we have to come up with a formal way of applying that. I agree. Right. And just, yeah. just for, for the record, that's, I might've been articulating it slightly mm -hmm. obtusely, but I agree with you. Everything has to be fair, it has to be uniform. And the way the IPMC is worded, the, the actual enforcement is, is largely up to craft. We've taken ourselves kind of out of that equation with the, the one kind of asterisk there is we've asked them to be more on the understanding side than more on the like rigid iron fist of this is exactly the way that it's worded. Um, easy example is that one gentleman out on, on Charming Forge. Lots of junk on the property. Started uh, making a lot of progress, was very good. Craft just drives by occasionally. He had a heart attack like in the middle of winter and they came to us and they were like, he, he's not done anything for a couple of weeks, but we know this is the situation. Do you want us to give him another letter? And the answer was like, no, just check up on him as things start to get warmer. Cause the poor guy had a heart attack. He's probably not physically able to go out there and the weather's not really good for, even if you hadn't had a heart attack, let's, let's revisit this in like, excuse me, uh, February or March. Let's give him a couple of months, look at it. And sure enough, as the weather turned and he had some time to recuperate, started making very noticeable, pro noticeable progress. It's much, 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 much better now than it was before. And we obviously, I, I personally don't want to be in the position of sending people strongly worded letters or fines when you have that sort of situation. Um, same thing with the property that, uh, that we were just talking about, the particularly problematic one. Um, there was a, a medical thing that happened where we actually basically said, crafts hold off for a couple of months. He had a, we, we know, just through the grapevine that he had a medical thing, reasonably, nothing's going to get done. You can't, can't make that expectation. So we want to make sure that we have the fairness aspect of it done, that it's prescribed and it's going through the same method, but also have something built in there where leniency for certain situations can be afforded. At the, at the end of the day, we're, again, we're all neighbors. We want to make sure that we're, we're getting the end results, but we don't want to kill somebody in the process. So... So let's talk to Andy about that Thursday right. night and see what we can do. 
Okay, next up is the Berks County EMS Dispatch Services. Uh, we have been paying police, fire, and EMS dispatch fees to the county annually, which are subject to an annual increase without limitations and decided solely at the discretion of the Berks County Commissioners. They have decided to fix the annual fee subject to increases based on the inflation index. They require us to adopt a resolution to execute the new agreement to provide dispatch services before 12-31-21. Uh, we've got a little bit of time to do this, but it's, it seems pretty straightforward from what they supplied over. The cost in 2022 is going to be $20,231.07. Um, I don't have 2021's number in front of me, but I think that's not a, a terribly large increase. I want to say maybe between 3 and 5%. It's pretty, pretty standard based on the other increases that we've seen in a number of the other fee schedules. But again, you can talk more about that Thursday night and make whatever motion is required around that. Uh, speaking of fees, uh, the saldo fees for stormwater uh, management ordinance and just the saldo in general uh, should be reviewed. The subdivision and land development ordinance is from 1991 and the fees are from 2005. The stormwater management ordinance are fees and, and fees are both from 2002. So they're at, the, at this point pretty outdated. Um, this is something that we're going to need to talk to McCarthy Engineering about in terms of getting an updated fee schedule or suggestion of fee schedules, uh, because at present, the township essentially takes a loss on every single one of those that comes through. Irene, I know you had been looking at this yeah. along with some of the no, other. No, that's Sue. God bless Sue. Again, <laughs> and again, and again, and again. So yeah, I, I want to... Um, I'll, I have to be in the office soon. I can put together some of the information that we have. And as long as you guys feel comfortable with it, I'll send an email out to uh, Jim McCarthy to get that done. Yeah, send, send the email, get, yeah. the, get the information. And for 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 edification for the public, um, we've been eating costs uh, that uh, people who are doing projects should be paying. And uh, uh, just as you said, some of these fees haven't been updated for decades. So uh, we need to get them updated so that the township isn't paying for certain uh, costs associated with um, uh, buildings, uh, excuse me, construction aspects. Okay. So I also included in your packet the list of fees that Jim's office put together for prior years that we have not billed. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty long list. Do you want them billed? Do you not want them billed? I know there was a little discussion about that prior, but I, I, I'd like to know. I, let's, uh, let's actually check with Andy and see how far back well, legally we can go. Back three years. Three years? But you might want to clarify that. I mean, if he's already weighed that decision in, the only concern that I have is, especially with individual property owners, Going back three years, three years is a, is, is a short amount of time, but it's also a long amount of time, depending on which side of the table you're sitting on. Um, yes, it's money, but it might be best, and Irene, Jim, give me your thoughts on this, Doug, to go back one calendar year, get ourselves kind of post-dated for like the 2020 year into 2021, and then- I mean, Irene, we've been going forward from 2020, yeah. right, Irene? Yeah, we've been going forward. Dan, don't worry, I could show you how to do this in the system in QuickBooks. There's a way to generate a, um, uh, uh, oh gosh, there's a way to generate an invoice plus track it. And all you have to do is just run a quick report and every month you'll get the, the mm -hmm. report. The other thing is, is the problem is enforcing it. So unless we're going to go to a collections agency, the only thing that we can do is just keep on sending letters out every month. And so depending on the amount of fees, um, you know, if, if we're not going to be receiving, and, and I do suspect down the road as, as we move forward, this might be in the thousands of dollars. This is something that we may have to consider getting involved with a um, collection agency if we're not going to get reimbursed for it. So just as uh, Jim Brooks is having an issue with one property, Property owner. I'm having one issue with um, one property owner not paying certain fees. So we're going to issue another letter and uh, 
you see what their response is. So, um, I mean, it might be something as simple as a letter from Andy, but at the same time, again, there's a cost associated with everything that we do. So down the road, we're going to have to see how much revenue is lost, how much we can recover and uh, see how people are compliant. Most people will pay if they receive a letter. Um, some people just won't. And so that, again, that's something that we have to consider as a township as to what our next step will be. Yeah, I think probably, hopefully we never have to get there, but having a collection agency on tap is probably not a bad idea for a number of reasons, this being one of them. Yeah. Most of these are, some of these are small amounts and some of these are, are fairly large amounts. Like there's, a, I think, one on here that's close to $6,000. There's one that's over $6,000. Um, there's one that's totaling around four and a half to five. So it's it adds up. It adds up. But the, again, the big question is, as we start to pursue these, how far back should we go? We might be legally allowed three years, but should we, again, just by the nature of things existing as it is, should we maybe go back only one, get ourselves because we've, we've gotten it to the point where anything new is being done correctly, but how far back into the past do we want to dig? I don't know. Personally, I think we ought to go back three years. Okay. Oh, Jim, that's, would you like to come and help me with this then? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Jim, honestly, I'd like I'd like to get you in the office so you could see what the process is and, and definitely help. I mean, I could always use the help. Sometimes Sue and I are in there, we're tearing our hair out, and we spent an hour and a half with an issue, and we have that aha moment, and we could move forward, but um, I could use all the help I can get. So I'll call you when I know I'll be around and get you in there to help me out with things. So They can be put on a, on a schedule for this, right? I mean, if they can only afford to give us Yes, yes, month, yeah, that's, 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 something, yeah. that's something that's, that we have to decide if, if that's what we want to it's do. Just so. not fair to property owners that have paid in the past, mm -hmm. right? Or ones that didn't ever use this, needed the service that the township is paying tax dollars to recoup. Yep. The, we, need, we need to recoup this if right. we can. These are sure. things that have just been missed and overlooked for whatever reason that Sue has brought to our attention. And we've got to stop eating these costs because it hurts us when we want to do roads, when we want to do maintenance, when we want to move forward with things. And, you know, on, honestly, there's a reason why we're seeing a lot of things crumble around us. And part of it's revenue. We've, we've missed out on revenue and not, not you know, not as a, as a bonus in that aspect and things that we should never have been paying for. So. All right. No, I agree. Okay. So let's... Uh... Let's work on outlining kind of the, the standard plan for like, for example, if you need to be put on a payment schedule, what that's going to look like, if that's going to be a straight like division across like a 12 month period, or if it's over a certain amount, some sort of graduated scale, um, getting that out into the forefront. That way it's again, a simple, uniform, repeatable process that we can go through for any of these uh, individuals that have this and then starting to send those letters out. So these would be for reviews by the engineer and the attorney. And that's um, like Andy's office gave Jim's office their costs for that project. Does that make sense? So every time, um, yeah, it's so somebody wants to build a chicken barn or chicken bars. Um, that comes before planning commission, and I believe we were taking um, the zoning permit fees, but then that still continues to be reviewed and inspected by the engineer, and we weren't charging for that. And so a, that's what these fees and it's, are. It's a cost of mm -hmm. the it's project. A, it is. You're so correct. We shouldn't be paying for someone right. else's project. Right. But then that, yeah, and we can like, talk to Andy and find out. Yeah, know, we kind of only found out this is by accident because how far back does this really go? Oh, a lot longer than three years. Since Peter I, Wallace and I have been here, because nobody told us we had to do this, so how were I, we supposed to know? I, I doubt it was being collected correctly even before that. Um, I can tell you when Susie Stone was here as treasurer, it was being uh, okay. Because that's how I found. Like Jim mm -hmm. came into the office and said, "Oh, Coomer Township's upset because or a." Uh, Subdivider is upset, a develop, land developer is upset because Kumar sent them a bill for like $100,000. So they just collected the fees for the whole, or they recorded the fees for a whole year and then sent the bill out after the project was done. 
And I was like, what? Are we supposed to be doing that? <laughs> yeah. So it's... But then I went back in the computer and found that I, because Susie kept spreadsheets on everything, mm. you know, but it's, it's not written down. So yeah. how, how are you supposed to know? Yeah. Well, this it's is, gonna be written down I now. was going to say, this is, this is where we've <laughs> made immense, immense strides on writing a lot of the processes mm -hmm. and procedures down so that we don't mm -hmm. have things five years down the road and we go, oh man. We, better, we need to start looking at the bills better. Yes. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's no, no it reflection on yeah, Jim no. or on Andy. I yeah. mean, they're just, they're billing. Yeah. So I mean, they're, we need, we need to know what's, what needs to be passed on to see, someone. Well, that's, right. that's the knack of it is we know the bills are legitimate, but what in terms of is township operational costs, what's bill back there, they're really, to, to Sue's point, other than like the spreadsheets, there really wasn't anything written down that would tell you like, okay, this is supposed to be a chargeback. This is something that the township incurs. This is, there wasn't any sort of kind of codex there, that would be able no, to decipher that. Um, systems of procedure. Mm -hmm. There's no, there's nothing written down about how to do anything. Yeah. It's just like here, you figure it out. You right. know? Yeah. Which we're, we're very much desperately we trying to get, get away from. Yeah, exactly. um, it was like Makes sense. Anyway, to that yeah. point, like we Stonecroft, it's like close to twenty six thousand. That is unreimbursed cost. That's half of a Colbert project right yeah. there. So, yeah. um, you know, it just gets a little interesting because, like, if you build a chicken barn and you pay your zoning fee, but then there's more inspection fees. Like, you have to take off that zoning fee that they already paid. It just is like a little confusing. Too. Yeah, we if memory serves me, we had talked about trying to, to get them to escrow a certain amount of money up front for certain projects where you would bill against that. And then when that was depleted, you'd have to put more money well, in the Jim escrow. Jim told me we can ask for escrow. I mean, I don't, I don't know how to do that. I don't know if you have to like have a so, so, or, yeah. you know, Irene? Yeah. Yeah. So when we escrow, we actually have to open up a separate account at the bank. It's not a problem. Well, it's a pain in the neck because for each project that's escrowed, we have to open up accounts. So all these accounts um, will receive charges for, et cetera, et cetera. And any, as long as we keep it into a checking account, we don't have to, we won't get any interest because interest would have to go back to the owner of the um, escrow account. So we can certainly escrow things. It just means creating more accounts and QuickBooks. It's it's a bookkeeping issue. If that's the way we'd like to pursue it, we certainly can do it. You just have to let me know. That's all. But do we have to make up like a policy? I, I would, if, even, if, even if it's not 100% required, I'd want to have a written yes. policy around like that. Like say if a project's over a certain dollar amount. Yes. Yes. In an escrow account. Yeah, if it's, if it's under $5,000, I'm just spitballing where I'm not saying go with that number, but if it's under, let's say $5,000, no escrow is required. If it's over $5,000 and escrow is required of X number of dollars. Right. And then um, like, as things are billed to it, if it reaches a certain point, like it gets down to $500, you are required to put additional funds in to cover the remainder of the product. That, that sort of right. thing. We need, right, right. we need to have something written around this. I, I think that would be a good idea. Yeah. Oh to, yeah. yeah. And I'm, yeah. I'm sure Andy's done that. Before. Yeah. 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 I'm sure that we're not the first place that's had this particular flavor of a yeah. problem. Right. And we're, we're finding mostly housekeeping issues, things that have kind of just been, you know, done by the seat of someone's pants and we need to make sure that there's a formal process for doing everything and and honestly sue and i've been working with putting things in files putting things in books so that there's instructions so that any of you guys can come in there and and follow the instructions and and do it so that's what we're really working on standardization is what we we truly need so that this isn't run as a mom and pop shop anymore because we're finding problems with how things have been run and and we're having these eureka moments over and over again and, and it never should have been this way mm -hmm. agreed anyway. yep yeah so okay. again I, I i can't say enough thanks to sue for all of her hard work, I mean, the hours that she puts into this and all the things that she finds and she gets us the answers. And so Sue rarely dumps a problem in, in our lap without saying, but this is what I've asked and this is what I've done. And I, I, I can't say enough thanking Sue for all the work that she does and, and all the time that she puts in there. And I don't think the public really understands what a wonderful person she is and all that she does for our township. So yeah. I'd like to stick that in there too. Yeah, thank you, Sue. I don't want this township to fail. I've lived here my whole life. So. <laughs> Good. Well, the, the dedication and the desire certainly show. So, yes, my God, yeah. 
Okay, that's the last item on the formal agenda. I don't have any comments. We already had covered the, the one that I had. Uh, Irene, do you have any comments? Um, yeah, just one more as an aside thing, again, more of a housekeeping thing. Um, I had spoken with Aikens Accounting and settled everything with respect to the uh, 2020 audit. So we had to do a little bit of housekeeping in QuickBooks. And uh, that kind of messed things up a little bit with, uh, Dan understands what it means when, when I talk about reconciliation. So things were nice and clean and tidy when I had Rick Rule come in to help things out. Then I had to just uh, switch some information around with Aikens and that kind of messed things up a little bit as far as how the information is in our program. So I did a double check. We had okayed an amount to Rick Rule for a total of 1600 and we used only 1378 So I sent out an email to, actually I made a phone call and an email to Rick about, hey, can you come help us fix this little problem? Because Aikens was under the impression that it might have had to do with the first sweep that Rick made of the account um, to just straighten things out as far as the um, information goes. So. Um, as long as everyone's okay with it, I, I don't anticipate going over that total 1600. If we do, um, um, I guess I'd have to, Rick is so reasonable with his billing. Um, if we do go over that, I guess that's something I'm going to have to bring back to the board, but it, it, it's got to be done. It, it's not something that I could just leave there and ignore again. So. Okay. I, I don't have an objection to it. If I would just say, ask Rick if he's getting to the point of close to going over, bring it up to the board and we'll either do another motion to add additional funds or what would amount to essentially a change order yeah. on that particular item. But yeah. uh, it's it's certainly a much cleaner, easier to understand method of bookkeeping now after we've had some professional oh God, assistance yeah. on that. So I think it's personally money well spent in that respect because there's a number of things that had been lingering in there um, there was like old orphaned entries from like 2013 that yeah. I had come across that they were able to give us the, okay, here's exactly how you deal with this sort of thing when you find it. So I, I, again, that was money well spent and is uh, right. going to be really beneficial for. Right. So, so Aiken was Anna under Weber. the impression that the corrections that Rick made for us, like exactly what you were saying, some of those 2013 entries, um, but some of the stuff that he may have done for 2020 may have altered some of their information. So it's just a matter of getting information in the proper place. That That's all that this is because everything's balanced. Everything is good. And I can honestly say I love Aikens. They went over everything with a fine tooth comb. Um, really different experience than what I had with other auditing agencies. And I'm looking forward to working with them again. And now that I know exactly what they need, January 2nd, I'll be ready to hand them over all the information. I know what they need. I'll be able to have everything in boxes and on uh, a flash drive. So it should be, I think, a very smooth transition for 2021 and going forward. So extremely pleased with their work. Okay, very good. Thank you, Irene. Jim, do you have any comments? Uh, thank you to uh, Ryan Ellenberger from Prudential Pest for coming out and taking care of the bees and hornets. Oh, yeah. and he came out quickly. I know we're paying him to do the job, but he, still he came out, I think the same day that we notified that him mm -hmm. and did a beautiful job for us. And I also want to thank Butch. I'm not going rip to the, rip the muffler off my car coming in the driveway anymore. <laughs> Uh, because Butch, Butch took some millings and Kevin, and Kevin. Well, thank, you, Kevin. thank you, Kevin, but filled that in a little bit. It's much, much better than it was. Not that it's not, it isn't perfect, but boy, it's a lot better than it was. <laughs> yeah, we came out pretty good. Nice job. Yeah, I don't have to, I don't have to go two miles an hour sideways and... <laughs> It's a, it's a Marion speed bump. <laughs> Marion speed bump. That's all I had. Thank you. Sue, do you have anything? I do not have anything. Okay. In that case, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. The time is now 10 27 a.m. Thank you, everyone. Somebody second. second. Yeah, some, somebody's second. got a second. Second. Okay. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. All right. Meeting adjourned. Meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.